the Grey Knights. These space marines are demon hunters, and they were created after the Horus Heresy once it was found that the Emperor's Primarchs could fall to chaos and turn traitor along with thousands of other space marines. The Grey Knights were to be a force of space marines who were utterly loyal, stern, and incorruptible. Their force would be completely made up of psychers, for it was their duty to fight fire with fire and use the powers of the warp against the forces of the warp. Serving the Ordo Malleus, a branch of the Inquisition tasked with protecting the Imperium from demons, the Grey Knights stand vigilant against the growing darkness, the hordes of demon kind who would engulf humanity and turn the Imperium into a chaotic wasteland in the service of ever-thirsting gods. Welcome to Grimdark and Dragons, the channel all about Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons, and combining the two to create epic experiences. My name is Tom, and today I'll be showing you how to play a Grey Knight Space Marine in D&D. This is the second installment of my Warhammer D&D character build series. My first video about the Ultramarines is linked in the description below if you haven't watched it yet. If you are interested in future character builds for the other factions of Warhammer 40k, please subscribe so you don't miss out. With that out of the way, let's get started. So how do you play a Grey Knight Space Marine in D&D? To help us with that, I made these objectives that will help us to capture the core flavor and aesthetic of the Grey Knights. First of all, they are Space Marines, so our character must be deadly and tanky. Next, the Grey Knights are effective demon hunters, so they must have abilities and features that help them to hunt, kill, and stave off the corrupting powers of Chaos and its demons. They must also have an unbeatable will to stand up against the horrors of the warp. Finally, the Grey Knights are all proficient psychers, so they must have magical spells and abilities to help them kill hordes of fiends. To achieve these objectives, we are going to be taking 10 levels of Paladin and taking the Oath of the Watchers, the brand new subclass from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Let's break it down. As a warrior of the Imperium, our Grey Knight will have to be a human. Let's take the variant human option so that we can take a free feat and give our Grey Knight some extra flavor. Choose the Magic Initiate feat, which allows us to take two cantrips and a first level spell we can use once a day from any spellcasting class. Our Grey Knight is a Psyker who is born with their magic. Let's choose the D&D class that is born with their magic, the Sorcerer. I looked at the Sorcerer's spell list and chose spells that felt the most psyker to me. Mind Sliver lets our Grey Knight cause a psychic disturbance in another creature's mind, and with lightning lore, he can lash out and pull creatures toward him with a bolt of lightning. These are great options for a Paladin because one of the biggest weaknesses of Paladins is their lack of ranged fighting options. These cantrips help us to remedy that. For our first level spell, take Shield. You can cast a psychic barrier around you that instantly adds 5 to your armor class. I love this spell for how helpful it is, plus it's fun to tell your DM, no, you actually don't hit me. Let's take a plus 1 to our strength and charisma to make us a better paladin. For our free skill, choose Arcana, which just makes sense to have as a demon hunting warrior. Finally, choose a celestial language. You can flavor this as knowing high gothic if you'd like, or whatever language of the gods language your DM uses. Space Marines are super soldiers in the 41st millennium, so take the soldier background. Our Grey Knight gets proficiencies in athletics, so you can throw demons around, and intimidation, so you can scare the scary demons. You are also proficient with land vehicles and a gaming set. Now we can talk about our ability scores. Let's put a 15 into strength, raising it to a 16, and giving us a plus 3 modifier at level 1. This is important because our Grey Knight should get plate armor as soon as possible, and he's going to be wielding a hefty greatsword. Put an 8 into dexterity. We'll have a minus 1 in that ability, but we don't really need it. Put a 14 into constitution, giving us a plus 2 modifier and making our Grey Knight really tough in combat. Put an 8 into intelligence. We will have a minus 1 in that ability, but that's what the nerdy inquisitors are for. We're here just to smite demons. Put a 10 in wisdom, which is considered average, which we will need to resist the fear and charm effects that demons possess. Finally, put a 15 in charisma, raising it to a 16 and giving us a plus 3 modifier in that ability. Grey Knights need strong, forceful personalities to hold true to their convictions of slaying demons. Plus our Paladin abilities count on having a good charisma. At level 1, the Grey Knight's Paladin class gives him some good abilities. He'll be proficient in all armor types and weapons, and with proficiencies in wisdom and charisma saving throws, he'll be extra resilient to demons. The Grey Knight can also choose two skill proficiencies, so take insight to help you sniff out lies heretics may tell you, and religion, because the Grey Knights have unshakable faith in the Emperor. In addition, the Grey Knight gets Divine Sense, 
which helps him find nearby demons and other scary monsters. With the ability Land Hands, he could heal himself or his ally five times his Paladin level, helping everyone stay alive and in the fight. At level 2, the Granite can learn a fighting style. The Granite I'm building is going to be like Garen Crow, the legendary Grey Knight who wields a demonic cursed greatsword at all times because he's afraid it might corrupt people if he doesn't, so choose Great Weapon Fighting. This fighting style will let you reroll 1s and 2s when you attack with a heavy weapon, but you must use the new roll. Great for stacking on extra damage. The Grey Knight also learns spellcasting at second level. Grey Knights have psychic powers that help them to augment themselves and their weapons and armor, and the Paladin's spells are perfect for conveying this. We can prepare 4 spells at level 2. I suggest you take Ceremony because the Grey Knights are all about their rituals, Divine Favor to fuel the power of the God Emperor behind your attacks, Protection from evil and good to ward yourself against demons, and Shield of Faith to use your psychic powers to make your armor even stronger. Finally, Paladins learn Smite at level 2 as well, every Paladin's favorite ability. Use your Psychic Rage and Belief in the Emperor to add 2d8 radiant damage to an attack and deal extra damage to fiends and undead. You can't get more Demon Hunter than that. Turns out I was wrong, you actually can. At level 3, our Grey Knight officially takes his Demon Hunting Oath through the Oath of the Watchers. This subclass definitely has the most Demon Hunting vibe to it. The Grey Knight learns special oath spells that are always prepared for him from his subclass and don't count against the number of spells he can prepare each day. He learns Alarm and Detect Magic at level 3. Alarm lets you cast a magic ring around a location, and if anyone enters the warded area, you will know. This is nice because you and your party can sleep in peace. With Detect Magic, you can sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you, and you know which school of magic the magic is from. The best part of Oath of the Watchers is its channel divinity options, which are basically magical effects you have from your oath that you can use once a short or long rest. The first option is Watcher's Will. With this ability, you can ward you and your party, granting you and three of your allies advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Demons and undead have spells and effects that force you to roll these saving throws, so this is an extremely great demon hunting option. The other channel divinity option is Abjure the Extra Planar, which allows you to castigate unworldly beings like demons and undead. Basically, you can force any number of demons within 30 feet of you to roll a wisdom saving throw, and if they fail, they have to run away. Our Grey Knight is so intimidating that he scares demons. Both of these are great options to use. I would recommend using Watcher's Will against demonic spellcasters or big demons, and Abjure the Extra Planar when you are up against demonic hordes. You can also use Harness Divine Power from your channel Divinity to give you more spell slots. But this is an optional class feature from Tasha's, so talk to your DM about whether or not you could have this ability. I personally think all the optional class features are great, but that's just me. More choices and options to play characters are always welcome to my eyes. You get one last third level ability, which is Divine Health. With this, you are immune to disease, so give Nurgle the middle finger as Poxwalkers attempt to get you sick. At level 4, you get your ability score improvement. Put 2 points into strength, raising the score from 16 to 18, giving our Grey Knight a plus 4 in that ability. At level 5, the Paladin class gives our Grey Knight extra attack. Watch your damage output skyrocket now that you can make 2 attacks instead of 1. Our Grey Knight also learns more O spells and second level Paladin spells. The first O spell we learn is Moonbeam. With this spell, your Grey Knight can control a silvery beam of light that deals radiant damage and can reveal the true form of devious shapeshifters. The second oath spell we get is Sea Invisibility, which is pretty self-explanatory. The Paladin's second level spell list is kind of meh. I recommend you take Lesser Restoration, which restores a creature back to normal if they are blind, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned, and Magic Weapon, which gives your weapon a magical property to overcome magical resistance and a plus one to attack and damage rolls. I don't see why you would use these spells all too often over Smite and the first level spells I recommended, but they are there for you nonetheless. At 6th level, our Grey Knight learns a neat ability called Aura of Protection. Your Grey Knight's will to slay demons is so strong that it rubs off on the rest of your party, giving you and any friendly creatures within 10 feet of you a bonus to saving throws equal to your Charisma modifier. I hope you like Auras because we got Auras with a set of Auras coming your way. At level 7, the Grenade gets Aura of the Sentinel. With this ability, you are extra vigilant, giving you and creatures within 10 feet of you a bonus to your initiative rolls 
equal to your proficiency bonus. Going first in combat is great, and this will help you and your party do that. Paladin 8 maxes out the strength of our Grey Knight with an ability score improvement. Put 2 points into his strength score, raising it from an 18 to a 20, giving him that sweet plus 5 modifier. At this point, it might be fair to say that you could outbench a Bloodthirster. We are at the last two levels of our character build. Paladin 9 sees our Grey Knight becoming a better Psyker by learning third level spells. I know it's tempting to blow all of your spell slots at Smites, but you're going to learn some awesome spells at this level. You learn two more O spells at this level, the first being Counterspell. It's basically the No You spell of the spells, allowing you to cancel a spell a spellcaster spelled at you. You get what I'm spelling here? Plus, it's basically the Deny the Witch ability that pretty much all psychers get, so it's super flavorful for our Grey Knight. The other O spell you get is Non-Detection. In the five or so years I've been playing D&D, I've never seen anyone use this spell. With Non-Detection, a person, place, or thing of your choosing can't be viewed with divination magic, such as the Scrying spell. I guess if you think a Peeping Slanesh is trying to watch you sleep, this spell might be effective. Anyway, the third level spell list is open to Grey Knights at 9th level 2, so take Magic Circle and remove Curse. The first spell gives you the ability to trap a demon inside a Magic Circle, or you can draw an anti-sea bear circle around you and your party so that demons can't get to you. With Remove Curse, you can remove curses that the Dark Gods gave people or objects you find on your adventures. At level 10, you get a nice frosting aura on top of the aura of cake you already have, with Aura of Courage. You and friendly creatures within 10 feet of you can no longer be frightened by their creatures, so run straight into that demonic horde and start chopping up some demons with your friends. And that wraps up our Grey Knight Space Marine character build for levels 1 to 10. Let's discuss how our character met the objectives that I laid out for us earlier. You are a badass Space Marine who can lay waste to tons of enemies and tank damage for your party. With an 18 AC from your plate armor, 84 hit points, your aura of protection, and lay on hands. Demons will have a fun time trying to kill you, and you can output a lot of damage with your greatsword, extra attack, and smites. The Grey Knight is a demon hunter with divine sense and your Oath of the Watcher abilities, such as Watcher's Will and Abjurer the Extra Planer. Defensively, you are protected from demons with protection from evil and good and Magic Circle, and the Grey Knight can bring the pain to demons with Smite, Moonbeam, and Divine Favor. Demons aren't fans of radiant damage, and these spells make sure that you have that on hand. Grey Knights are known for their indomitable will, and with your aura of protection, sentinel, and courage, you will stand tall against demons, and even get the drop on them with the bonus to your initiative. Finally, Grey Knights are capable psychers, and you have a number of magical spells and abilities from your Paladin class and your feet. Don't forget Mind Sliver and Lightning Lure to help shore up the Paladin's weak range capabilities. The cherry on top is your once per day use of the shield spell. And that is how you play a Grey Knight Space Marine in D&D. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your Warhammer and D&D friends, and subscribe so you don't miss future Warhammer D&D character builds. Comment below if you have any questions or want me to cover any faction, and I promise I'll get to those first. This has been Tom from Grimdark and Dragons, and I hope you have an epic day.